Uh, many of us uh, here in America uh, take eating food for granted. How many times on Sundays have we wasted m food and money and time trying to decide which restaurant are we going to? So there are those of us in this room who've been to Haiti where this food is going. Those persons, many of those persons don't have this luxury. It's a, it's a trip that is life transforming and changing because it helps to remind us of how blessed we are. And sometimes bless, being blessed uh, equals being spoiled. Amen. And, and also spoiled makes you sometimes inconsiderate. Yeah. And so thank you for not being any of those things, for devoting your time and efforts and money uh, to make sure that our brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters, and for those of us who have African persuasion, uh, they were brought here on boats and they landed where they landed. It could have been us. It could have been us. And so to whom much is given, much is required, and you've answered that call this morning, and so give yourself another hand. Yeah. And finally, I want to recognize the efforts and memory of Reverend Dr. Norma Burris. Her commitment, not just with her lips, uh, but with her hips and her pocketbook. And she left many dollars that are still being used uh, to help uh, in these kinds of efforts. Uh, that's the kind of life we all should live. We may not be able to leave money, but we ought to leave a legacy that can help somebody once we're gone. Well, we're building on the tradition that has already been in place. Uh, the name Reverend Dr. Norma Burris has been mentioned several times. Uh, she was a school teacher, uh, but she was also a licensed minister, even back in the day. I think that was done by Pastor Davies. And uh, she was committed to foreign missions. Uh, she, she was a major, major part of the Lot Carey Foreign Mission Convention, and there she caught the bug, if you will, the enthusiasm to be of help to brothers and sisters of African persuasion that if we want other people to be of help to people on the continent and in the diaspora, we have to also do our part as African American people. And so we are just blessed by her memory. It is a wonderful thing to hear it is 20. 22, she died some years ago, but her work continues. And uh, several of us have been to Haiti and to other points in the world uh, doing foreign mission work because of the efforts that, that she put forth and the monies that she left on record uh, to continue that work. I, I made two mission trips to Haiti since I've been here, and it's life's transformative because I wish I could take, I wish I could have taken uh, all of my own children and the whole church there because it's, it changes your life. There's things that you take for granted, clean water, uh, things that you take for granted, balanced meals uh, are not so. It's a real heartbreaking thing to me to, to have seen it and knowing of the earthquakes, the uprising, and the, and the fact that Western nations, including the United States and France, have done their part to to make Haiti to what it is today. I mean, it's, it's almost like a dog-eat-dog -dog situation. Foreigners come in and they, they do their, their business and get what they need out of it, but they leave the people uh, in the same way that they often came. And so the unrest there is because everybody is in survival mode. Everybody is just one meal away from being uh, hungry, basically. And so there are a few people at the top, but then you get people at the top who want to stay at the top. They want to keep their families at the top. A lot of misconceptions, a lot of people have gone in to say they're going to do great work. But I'm very proud of our connection with Lot Carey Foreign Ministry because they consistently do great work. It's one of the best uh, church organizations I've been a part of because they, we actually do the work and not just take money and, and use it at the top because none of the lot carry officers get paid uh, but they use it all across the world to help people in need so 20,000 meals here today that you're going to 20,000 meals and we're already planning for the next one and so there are people who want to partner with us uh, churches that, uh, that are in our, in our community, churches that are connected to MICA, who uh, offered that they would be interested in doing something similar. So we're, we're hopeful 
that 20,000 will multiply into 40,000 all the way up to 100,000 because it takes about $5,000 or so to buy the product that's here and the shipping and all those things that are connected with it. But if other churches will get involved uh, and other persons involved, and, and, uh, and there are other individuals, if there's somebody out there that says, look, you know what, I like what you're doing, I want to send you $100, we'll, and you can send it to Shiloh Baptist Church uh, in care of the foreign mission, in care of the Haiti uh, meals, if that's what you want it for, and we will make sure that every penny of that goes to this effort because these people are in desperate need of a great meal and, and a life that can be changed and transformed with, with the ingredient that we're not putting in the bag that is more important perhaps than the food, and that's hope. And you're, you're, you're teaching everyone here, a, a, and especially the kids, right. a lesson. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm very proud of that fact. Uh, we have uh, Aaron Dobines, our youth minister, Aaron Dobines, Jr., uh, come right in here, son. Uh, so we're uh, proud to have uh, youth involved in his leadership. Uh, is very much involved with that along with others. Uh, come on over here, son. Uh, this, this is my beloved son, whom, whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> uh, You've got to be excited about this, so, just to, to teach the youth a, a lesson here. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely excited. Always, you know, the youth are our future. It's a cliche statement, but it's definitely true, you know. And we just have to do what we have to do to make sure that they can be guided down the right path.